can have an operation on Thursday, which he came through very well. And he's up home healing this morning. You understand that Bill Mark had an operation last Monday or Tuesday. What? Thursday. Uh, yeah, we can go Thursday. And he came through that fairly well. Sister Hung is scheduled for surgery Friday. <laughs> so we got folks who definitely cover your prayers and let the healing process go right. very, very quickly and they'll be back on their feet and running around setting straight like he can be sure to do once he gets back up and down. <laughs> Grateful for Brother Bill this morning.
we actually played it on guitars. I've never played it on the pianos. Yet, but, but it's amazing how you hear something and the next thing you know it's waking you up from a dead sleep. Wow. You ever been there? Yeah. I was laying there in bed, I don't know, it's been two or three weeks ago, and I woke up and how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, whatever that is. See, I don't even know the words, because I've never sang it. But it was in my heart. That's why I fought having televisions or overhead projectors for so long. Because I want these songs we sing are not just songs. They're, they're actually <coughs> praises unto God. And I want those praises to be written on. Does that make sense? Maybe it don't to some of you, but to me it does. Because I found that in the old times when we used the hymn, was something between here and here, it went here. Now we just expect it to be there and we've learned to lean on technology. And how I many of y'all know, even here at this little church where technology is great, most, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, we still have our glitches. Amen? Remember when we first put the televisions in, we were glitching out to the max. I mean, we had some trouble there those first two Sundays and it was pathetic. There's no better way to say it. It was pitiful. Now we've got those glitches worked out and it seems we're pretty good. But technology can fail, but if the praises of God are written on our heart, that will never fail. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
last time we won Red Cross Secret Wars, we'll just welcome in the Holy Ghost. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Don't just say the words, make it a hard crime. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. distractions present. Don't believe me? Sit down and try studying the Word of God.
Sometimes we gotta outsmart the devil. I, I uh, put three Bibles in the bathroom. Uh, three? Three. Well, you don't know, study time. Go in there and shut the door, and I'm alone from the world. Leave my phone in another room. I ain't fixing to be bothered with all of those things. I've got to have time with the Lord, and I've got to make that time wherever I can. So my wife knows that if I'm in the bathroom and the door is closed, that is, don't bother my time. Because our spouses mean well. They just sometimes need a little prompting to leave us alone. Is that better? Thank you. See, she means well. I couldn't see it. It wasn't bothering me. And so does the rest of the world. They, they may be calling just to check in on you, but it's your alone time with God. Listen, the Bible tells me in uh, Psalms chapter 91, verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I prayed for two weeks, God, I need sermons from when pastor's gone. And you know it wasn't until I woke up this morning that I got this verse. I don't understand. God could have given it to me two weeks ago. And you know what? It would have been for me. It wouldn't have been for this place. God will give you what you ask for on time. Look at somebody and say, He's on time. He's on time. Not your time. Not your time. Because I am one of them people that especially when it comes to having something to say to the congregation of God, and I don't care if there was one or, or 400, I want a word from God. It is His word, not Mike's word, that will change your situation. It is His word, not my word, that will dispel and disperse the devil out of our lives. That's right. It is His word and not my word that will reach your heart and touch your lives. My goodness, last Sunday was beautiful. It was a beautiful service. Yeah. But it's over. Yeah. And while that word was good for last week, it's not good for this week. Somebody say amen. amen. We need a fresh word. So as I woke up this morning, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Some people think that this secret place, Brother Jeff, referred to the Holy of Holies. Other people in a different camp of theology. See, the great thing about theology is nobody can agree on anything. Other people in a different camp of theology believe that that secret place is in complete reference to what they called the secret place in their army encampments. It was the general or the commander's tent. And it was placed in the very center of all the troops. Why? Because in order to get to the commander, you had to go through everybody else. Let's take a look at this. If it is the Holy Holies, if it is the most holy place, it's accessible today. Because Jesus Christ is your commander. And the angel armies will usher you to Him. That's quite a way to think about it. Yes. That means that no matter what demon power or devilish imp has hitched his tail to your coattails, he can't make it through the presence of God to get into the holy place. Praise God. And we wonder why we're so bound within our lives. Why when we pray, our prayer goes right there and just falls and hits the ground. How many of y'all ever felt like that? You prayed and, and it went right to there and then it just felt like it fell and there was nothing. You ever feel like that? My goodness, how many times I've prayed a prayer for somebody else. I was talking to a dear friend of mine, someone that mentored me in, in uh, evangelistic ministries named Brother Rose. Some of the guys know Brother Rose. I was talking to him earlier this morning. He said, I was preaching about hellfire and conviction and damnation and about the devices of the devil last night. Up under the tent. He's in Temper Bible in Des Moines this week. And he said, and I was preaching, I was preaching about how the devil just creeps in everywhere. He'll creep right into your music. You better be careful what lyrics you're putting in mind. And, 
and he said there was this long-haired hippie man sitting about all the way in the back, and he started getting a little upset and frustrated at the word that I was preaching. Why? Because it, it dealt with where he was living, and he wasn't ready to give it up. Right. He said, well, wow, his girlfriend, his wife, whoever that woman was, drug him up to the front of the tent last night in the altar service. <laughs> And she was sitting there working on him. You need to pray. Ha. You need to get right. Ha. You need to seek Jesus. You need to lift your hands. He said his hands went up and I went to him. I gave him a good praying for him. I don't know if he received it or not, but at least I prayed for him. There have been prayers I have prayed for people even in this place that it felt like that. I gave you a good praying for him, but it felt like you couldn't receive what God was trying to give. Oh, that's good preaching. Why? You weren't ready to give it up. Well, this morning's one of them kind of sermons. You either receive it or you don't. It's all up to you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Listen, you can't get to the holy place if all that sin is wrapped around you. you got to let it go sometime. You can't get to where God is if you walk in so burdened down that no amount of anything can move you. You gotta let it go sometime. Sometimes what we gotta do is say, forget my problems, forget my worries, forget my past. I'm concerned about my future and let it go. Because God Himself will carry it if you'll give it to Him. And you can't get to the secret place all burdened and cumbered down with sin. You know what it took in the Old Testament for the priest, the Levitical priest, to get to the most holy place? They had to put on every priestly garment they had. They had to put on that breastplate that must have weighed 50 pounds because it was all encased in gold with fine jewels in it. They had to have their feet shod. They had to have on their girdle. They had to have on their belt. They had to have on their and carry incense and wear bells around the border of their garment. Bells? Yeah, bells! That way, if the bell stopped ringing, they'd pull him out dead. He was unworthy to stand in the presence of God. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. Oftentimes we walk through those doors unworthy. It's not us ever that makes us worthy. It is the blood of Christ. And it works for you if you let it. The problem is, is that we get so wrapped up in our little individual sins that we can't see God. Because we'd rather hold on to sin than reach for the things of God. And we can't make it to the secret place, so every dart that the enemy would throw at us just seems to come straight from him, and it sticks. Why? Because we've dropped our veil of protection and allowed ourselves to come into a place that's dangerous, believing in God enough to accept what He did for us on the cross, but not believing in Him enough to live for Him. An old evangelist once said, if you live for God easy, whoo, it's hard. <laughs> But if you live for God hard, it's easy. I can think of a few folks, even in this place, that when they got saved, brother, sister, friend, they got saved, God cleaned them up. I remember Sister Robin when I first met her. She was a work in progress, but man, everything that dropped from her life that second she accepted Christ was beautiful and miraculous. And it's taking God a good long while to work on her. Sister Mary, you and I, we grew up in church. We didn't have all them huge weights that beset us. But there was one thing we have lacked at some point in our relationship. And that is a desire for fire. A desire for fire. Have you ever started a fire with nothing? I will guarantee you, if you ever started a fire, you at least, bare minimum, had to have sticks and stones. Yes. Mostly we have to have dry wood. Because that wet wood will sit there and smolder, but it will never burn. What are you talking about? Listen to me carefully. When you're ready for the presence of God to come in, He will. Period. 
But when you've allowed every situation in your life just to encumber you and ensnare you, then what happens is you become wet with sin. And you're just going to smolder before the Lord because you ain't ready to give it up. You ain't ready to get up. And you ain't ready to go on. I want to remind you of something in the Word of God. As I was studying this morning, the Lord took me to the book of Luke, chapter 10. And I was reminded that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, it's when we're close to God that we're under His protection. The shadow of the Almighty is protection, my brother my sister. It is protection and it is for you so that those darts that the devil flings at you won't stick. That's interesting, isn't it? Yes. How many of y'all came, and don't raise a hand, I don't need to see your sin, but just answer it truthfully within your heart. How many of y'all came in burdened down, confused, and, and just needing a touch from God this morning? Let me put it to you like this. There is a secret place of God that I believe everybody in this place has experienced. It's a place that no preacher can get you to. No musician can get you to. It's a place where you've got to just seal it off and give God everything. That's why I believe that the gathering of ourselves together is so important because when we're around other people seeking God, it's easier for us to get a little. You ain't never going to be fed if you ain't at the table at the right time. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10 verse 38 reads like this. You got to say amen. amen. Now it happened as they went in, he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard His word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. I'm going to stop right there for a second. I love the fact that we have got Sunday school class in a rotation now. And the reason I love it, and the reason that I try to take care of the projector when pastor's preaching is so that Jenny can be fed without her mind being on what I'm saying so that she's got to flip and, and work because sometimes it's better just to set and receive than it is to serve. <coughs> and the reason I love we've got a rotation for our Sunday school teachers and, and I've wanted one for a long time is because it's easy to get burnt out when you're not being fed. Yeah. What are you talking about? Listen, I don't care what anybody says. You can have the worst preacher in the world. I mean, y'all put up with me. It's okay. You can have the best pastor in the world, and I think we've got a great one. But you will never be fed unless you're ready to receive. And it's all about how we come in that door. If we come in that door nursing and rehearsing all of our troubles and trials, we can't be fed. And I can make you a CD of the service and, and have Darren make you a CD of the service and, and you can receive that. And that's a good word, but it's nothing like a fresh cut word from God for you for that day right here in the house of God. Amen? Cumbered about with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. See, the problem is when we're busy working for the Lord and, and we're sealed off from what God is doing, it's easy to get our eyes inward focused. Woe is me. Woe poor me. Because we've lost sight of the vision of who God really is. We've lost sight of the fact that we need His Word divided unto us every day. Watch this. This is worth your whole day. If you get nothing more, get this. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. He really said to Martha, look, this thing that 
you brought before me isn't the extent of your trouble. There are many things on your mind. Verse 42. But one thing is needed. My King James Version says, one thing is needful. Doesn't matter how you look at it, but I like needful. One thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. I have often said the only thing we're allowed to be selfish with in this world is our relationship with God. Why is that? See, the more Jesus I get, the more I want to share Him with you. The more Jesus you get, the more you want to share Him with me. We were here last Sunday praying, and I had preached my heart out, and, and I was pretty well done, and Sister Donna grabbed me. She said, I need prayer. We prayed for her, and I asked her Tuesday, I said, how did, she was having some issues with her chest hurting. I said, how did all that turn out for you? She said, I haven't had any pain since. Why? Because God saw fit to touch her then. She needed a right now answer, and we serve a right now God. She was willing to grab me and say, hey, you ain't done yet. Sometimes your preachers need grabbed a little bit and said, hey, you ain't done yet. I need prayer. Get a little selfish about it. Listen, when you need somebody to agree with you, it's up to you to make it happen. I'll reach God for you any time, day or night. I don't care. Well, that's a far cry from what I used to say. No, it's not. See, I've always said you need to seek God first yourself and then give me a call. Because until you've got sought God first yourself, there's nothing I can agree with you with. You haven't trusted Him first. You're trusting me first. And there's a difference. Y'all hearing me? Am I making any sense? Yeah. we got to put God first in everything. Everything. And I know that I watched her sit there for half the service seeking God. No sense in you walking out in pain today if you're in pain in this place. We can pray and see an answer. There's no sense in you walking out burdened today if you're in burden in this place. We have been at the table of God, at the feet of God, and it's time to get a little bit selfish with it. Father, I need your touch. You're here. You put your faith in Him. Period. I'm not speaking to an unsaved crowd today. I'm speaking to people that love the Lord and seeking Him. Yeah. You're here. You put your faith in Him. But that doesn't mean you don't have needs. That's right. yeah. One thing it's needful. And she's chosen that good part that will not be taken away from her. That doesn't mean the devil won't try. Every time God does something amazing in your life, get ready. There's getting ready to be an obstacle come. God's doing amazing stuff in this church. And while I, I miss Pastor, I'm kind of sad to see that he's gone for two weeks. That's just me. I love him. But it was needful. He needed a rest. This church is amazing. It's wonderful. It's not like most other churches. But there are still struggles here that will weigh on a pastor's heart. And sometimes a preacher just needs to get away. Yes. She'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a covering when we stay close to the secret place of the Most High God. In other words, when you walk out of here, the praises of God are on your lips. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And the devil comes against you, and the next thing you know, your husband's trying to argue, or your wife's trying to argue. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You want to talk about getting into a heated debate quick. Just sing it right in their face. Welcome, Holy Spirit. What's that going to do? It's, it's going to stir up the enemy. Are you even sifted by the enemy, Brother Mike? You bet your boots I am. There are times I just want to have a good little fight. Something rises up in me and stirs within me, and I just want to tell Vicky about it. 
There are times she just wants to have a good little fight. I promise you this, next time your spouse is wanting to have a good little fight, welcome Holy Spirit. There's no way to shut the devil up quicker than inviting God into your situation. See, the secret place of the Most High is a covering. It's a covering when you feel weak. It's a covering when you feel vulnerable. And it doesn't matter what it takes to get there. You just need to get there. And you need to learn how to stay there. David didn't carry the Ark of the Covenant everywhere he went. But he carried God's presence everywhere he went. The Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. And if you study out the words of David in its entirety, and the story of David in its completion within the Word of God, what you'll find is this. Before every situation never ever, David ever got into, except for one, he sought God first. You know what the one situation was he didn't seek God on, and he got it completely wrong, and cursed his family for the rest of his life? Bathsheba. It's the one situation in the Word of God he didn't seek God first for. Because his flesh got in the way. I want you to understand something. Just because you want it doesn't mean you need it. In 1994, I played this piano here. And I said to God, I said, I, I want this piano. And it was eight years later when God finally said, okay, you can have it. We beat that thing for the Lord. We beat that thing for the Lord. We beat that thing for the Lord. Everywhere we went for nine years, we beat that piano for God. Eight years, somewhere in there. And God saw fit to give me a better one. Exactly what I needed. Even what I wanted. What are you talking about? Before we made a move on anything, because I could have used a new piano two years ago and prayed about it and waited for God to open the door. My sister Mary, I know, has prayed a lot for me. God, just let him leave that big piano right here in the church. I don't want him. I don't want to play that little piano, Lord. That <laughs> every time I take this on the road, I'd I hear, I don't want to play this little piano. And you don't ever have to play that little piano again because God saw fit to make a way. And if God will do it for me, and if God will do it for Sister Mary, who are you to think He won't do it for you? But it comes back to a secret, church. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, under the covering of the Almighty. Have you felt vulnerable recently? Have you felt weak recently? There's a reason for that. I'm going to tell you what it is and how to fix it. You've been so busy doing things your own way, you've forgotten how to do it God's way. I want to say that one more time. You've been so busy doing things your own way, you've forgotten how to do it God's way. You don't have to be weak spiritually. Right. You don't have to be vulnerable spiritually. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Someone once said, who am I really? Who's Brother Mike really? And I submit to you that what you see is what you get. And I've always said it's not who I am in public that makes me who I am entirely. It's who I am when I'm alone that makes me who I am. It's like pastors often preached about the dear saint of God who had two purses. A Saturday night purse and a Sunday morning purse. And it was fun when she'd get them confused. I don't want to live in that camp. 
if I can't be me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, how in the world can I keep up with two different sides of me? Eventually, I'm going to fail the Lord. And in failing Him, I failed myself. What we need to realize is one thing and one thing only. When Jesus came to the woman at the well and said, give me drink, and she said, how is it that you ask me for something to drink? You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. Jews have no dealings with Samaritan, and I'm a woman. And Jesus said, go get your husband and bring him out here. She said, I ain't got a husband. He said, you said well that you don't have a husband. You've had five, and the man you're living with isn't your husband. She said, the Jews say that we must worship at Jerusalem. Our fathers say we must worship here. And this is what I wanted to get to. Jesus said, except you worship in spirit and in truth, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. I want to work on that just for a few minutes. Except you worship in spirit and in truth. It has nothing to do with this place. Right. Has everything to do with who you are outside of this place. Right. You see, your spirit can be in, in complete agreement once you walk through those doors because you got your Sunday morning purse in hand. <laughs> you got your Sunday morning wallet in your back pocket and you are ready to go. Your spirit can be in agreement once you walk through those doors. But if you walk out of here and you're somebody else, you need to get your life in check. Right. I don't care how well you can speak in tongues when you're inside this place. Show me how well you can treat your neighbor and your family when you're outside this place. And I'll show you Jesus. I don't care how well you can shout and clap and run around the church when you're inside this place. Show me that you can take care of the widows and orphans when you're outside this place. And you'll show me Jesus. I don't care how well we get along inside this place. Show me that we're not backbiting, bickering, and complaining about one another when we're outside this place. And I'll show you Jesus. Because where the Spirit of God is, there is unity and there is liberty. And I want to be there. I'm tired of watching churches get built up just to be broken apart by some bitter, bickering, poor old soul. It's not about that. It's about Jesus. Someone said, what's it going to take to reach this community? I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take every man, woman, boy, and girl inside of a church house to finally say, I've had enough of this world. I've had enough of this confusion. I've had enough of this pain and heartache. I've had enough of this selfish hatred. I've had enough of this feeling broken and abused. I've had enough. I'm ready to stand and be the man, the woman, the boy, and the girl that God called me to be. But until we get sick of Satan, we're never going to reach heaven. We'll just play around the fringes. I'll serve God on Sunday and maybe on Thursday night, but forget the rest of the week. i got other things to do. Brother Mike, how do I serve God in my job? Watch this. In spirit, and in truth. My wife, when I met her, God bless her, she never told a lie. Not one. Old time she was growing up, she was the most honest child in her family, and her parents loved it. <coughs> you wanted to know what happened? Just ask Vicki. That's, <laughs> that's an easy way to get over on mommy and daddy. She'd tell on herself, but she'd also tell on her brothers. Why? She had honesty within her that hadn't been defiled. She met me and... <coughs> Two years after she met me, we went ran to Rochester in a blizzard. Her mom called, where are you at? We're in Centerville at Sonic. First lie she ever told me. Because she knew her mom would go ballistic if she found out she was in Rochester, Minnesota with me. And it was snowing to beat the band. We were in Whiteout half the way. 
but I didn't have any money, so I needed to get my bank check. It was in Rochester, Minnesota. So Vicky lied. Did you ever tell your mama? Yes. A couple years ago. <laughs> I know it was over 10 years later. She finally fessed up. Set that lie straight. We have a relationship. We don't lie to each other. I may call her and tell her I spent money just to get her wound up and then tell her the truth. She's caught on to that little racket too, so she don't get wound up anymore about silly little things like that. You know what happened is she felt so guilty about that one lie. She couldn't couldn't feel right again until she said it's true. Is that the only lie she ever told? To the best of my ability and the best of my knowledge, and I've known her ever since, that is the only lie she ever told. Well, that's nothing. To you, it's nothing. To her, it was a lie. There are things in your life that you're not proud of, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't overlook them just to love you. That's amazing, isn't it? And the fact of the matter is, even though you think you're hiding them from God, we forget often. He sees all things. He knows all things. He saw you when you did it. And He saw your thought process leading up to you to do it. David said, you understand my thoughts are far off. So what are you hiding out for? But Brother Mike, if that's the case, how can I ever be pure before the Lord? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High <coughs> shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to me carefully. When we worship God, we come into this place. There are days when I step behind that keyboard and I know you are ready for worship. Because from note one, from word one, you can feel the unity in this place. There are other days when we hit those notes and we sing the whole service and there is no unity. You've come in burdened down and broken by all of the things that distract you outside of this church. And you've carried them right on in here. And instead of getting anything from the Lord that day, you get nothing. Because you're not in a place to worship in spirit and in truth. Anybody hear me this morning? No. Can you say that's been you? I can say it's been me. Raise a hand. Yes. Be honest with yourself. Yes. Amen. Now, let's be more honest with ourselves. It doesn't have to be that way. I wrote a chorus that says, If Jesus be, I'll live him down. All of my burdens. That's what Mary did. All of my doubts. This is the place where grace abounds. At the feet of Jesus. I wrote that chorus one day when I was so broken and burdened within. I was carrying a load that was not mine to carry, but I carried it anyways. And as I finally got sick and tired of it, I said, God, I don't understand. What am I to do with this mess? And he said, it was never yours to carry. Give it back to me and I'll take care of it. And that night at a revival service I did, I gave it right back to the Lord. And you know what? He's been faithful to carry that thing ever since. Why? I didn't need it. It wasn't profiting me anything. All it was doing was causing harm. And every one of us in this place have been in that exact situation where we've carried things, we've carried burdens and guilts and condemnation within ourselves that we did not need to carry. They weren't ours to carry, but we've taken them anyways. And Jesus says this morning in this place, if you'll give it to me, I'll take care of it. You don't have to carry that thing anymore. Well, Brother Mike, what happens when I go out of here and sometime in the week I'm, I, I'm, I'm physically and spiritually not strong enough to withstand the devil and I slip up again? Bring it back to God. Give it to Him and let Him take care of it. 
Brother Mike, what if I have to every week? Listen to me, simply, church. If you live for God easy, it's hard. But if you bring it back week after week, day after day, night after night, at some point you start living for God hard, and it becomes easy. A dear friend of ours has gone on to be with the Lord. Had a young man when he was a kid. It was himself. He fell on a milk jug and cut his hand. Sliced his, his, one of his fingers was just dangling. And they were all freaking out. All the parents were upset and running around. And Grandma came out of the house and said, Stop! Give me that boy. She put her hand over his wound. Father God, in the name of Jesus, at some point in time in your family and your community, you need to be that grandmother who doesn't see what's in front of you but knows that God is able. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about being in the secret place of the Most High this morning. See, it's not just something we come into once a week. It's a place we live. Yeah. And they prayed for him. God began to heal that thing. And he got blood poisoning. Grandma heard about it. She come running over. Give me that baby. And she held him. And she cried out before God. God healed Brother David. I don't know how many times I heard him tell that story. God healed that man. Because a grandma was willing to seek God first. All too often we're busily worried about what others are going to think. Listen, it's time to get our relationship right. in order with God. I don't know how long we got left. Brother Mike, that's a scare tactic. No, that's a truth tactic. Why can't we begin to see that the Word of God is real? And it's not real for tomorrow. It's real for today. Jesus is coming. And He's coming for a church that is ready and waiting. <clears throat> Come on, Mr. Piano, Sister Mary. A church without spot and without wrinkle. Yeah. A church that wants to see Him oh so bad. Yeah. That they're living up next to him. Who? It's been a long time since I preached the word that hard. Hope it's not a longer time. Why? Because see, now I presented all of the evidence as plainly as I know how. If at any point in that sermon you felt like you were in a place where you were weak, or vulnerable, you don't have to be. If any point in saying, bring it to Jesus and let Him take care of it, you really truly felt that pull on your heart, it's time. It's time. It's time we bow a knee at an old-fashioned altar and we'll just make this front row our altar this morning and give Him our burdens. Reveal yourself to this child who once walked 
in your way. Who knew you were real? But has allowed the devil to creep in and whisper doubt, whisper confusion into her life. Father, right now we give her back to you and ask you to reveal yourself to her. In Jesus. In Jesus. Father, go. Crazy, give him a lot of honor, a lot of praise. Do it. Hallelujah. 